Well, this morning we have, ah, look, <laughs> we have, it looks like screen one is up. This morning, I, I've never done PowerPoint on this new computer I have. I got it a few months ago and I've never done a PowerPoint. So I worked on it this week and worked on it and when I left this morning, it was not put together. It was not complete. So I came and I brought my computer and I gave it to Nick. <laughs> I mean, what else would I do? So I gave it to Nick, and Nick played with it, and, you know, here it is. So if it works this morning, thank you, Nick. If it doesn't work, it's my fault. But I appreciate so much his being able to do that. Play I, had, on me if it don't. I had some photos I wanted to show. Uh, is, this a, is this our... No, it's Ah, here it is. Okay. Now let's see what happens. Okay. I taught, <laughs> I taught in my sermon Cecil. Now, who do you know? Do you know Cecil? Anybody? You know Cecil? Cecil the Lion. Cecil the Lion. All right. <laughs> Good for you. He watches the news a little bit, doesn't he? All right. Well, that's where we learn. Of course, I went to the Internet too. Learned a lot more about Cecil than I get on the news. So, I want to make a connection here about how we can react to the killing of a, of a lion we don't even know and to what we might react and do otherwise. And I'm looking at two verses this morning and I'll have a third one later on. But primarily, these verses. Now there's Cecil. All right? Recognize him? No, you don't. You've never seen him. But you heard about him. A lot of you heard about him. Well, he looks like most any other male lion. But he's impressive, isn't he? Yeah. He's wearing a collar, but you didn't you may not see it on him. Now Cecil it was illegal to hunt in the park in Zimbabwe. But if you can lure that lion out of the park you might get by with it. They paid the guys, I see it's one figure of $50,000 for their guys in, so we can get a lion. You know, I've got money and I want to go back and I want to mount this guy's head and show people how brave I was. <laughs> show how good I am at a hunter. Well, the story is he, he was a game park resident, but they lured him out and um, baited him, and and of course they used a bow and arrow, so nobody would hear the shot. And um, as a result, he got his lion. Well, several things were illegal about this, but some of the things because a male lion in Africa. And one of these game parks is worth something like forty thousand dollars a year for tourists to pay to come and see. A lion is a you know, you can see zebra and wildebeest, even elephants. That's not that big of a deal. Because lions are much more difficult to spot and to see. So if you can get a good shot, photo shot, of a lion, you pay money for those tours and people take you out. So these lions bring in a, a lot of money you know, in places where they have them. So they, you have to have a permit to hunt outside the park, but they did not have a permit. And um, of course the guys say, well, they had one, but nobody, I guess, has seen the permit. And then they did this at night, so they had to, they baited him so he would come into the light where they could see him. And as a result of that, this dentist had a lot of money. He could afford this kind of a trip. You know, when you take a hunting trip, you have to have a lot of guides and things. It's an expensive thing. The equipment to move in and, and all of this has cost a lot of money. But because this lion had been seen by so many people, they had taken photos of him. This really created a, not a national, but a worldwide 
uprising against this Dennis. He wanted to come back and I guess mount him. And people could see what a good hunter he was. But instead, he sent him was with a lion, was with Cecil. He had to close his practice. He said he got death threats and all kinds of threats because people did not like him going and killing this lion, particularly this one, because a lot of people had heard about him. As a result of that, I don't know <laughs> what the dentist will do with this head now. I don't know if he got to keep him or not. But anyway, it's a situation which is not very good. But it brings me to Africa, this time to Nigeria, and we'll see. You've seen Dr. Bioden, he was here, spoke to you people a few years ago. He's on the left, he's the president of the college, of course, and uh, he's, uh, he, is, uh, he and I have spent time together. We're like brothers, uh, eating with him and we've taken trips, and, you know, they put you in the same bed. Eat and sleep with him and things of this nature. Lecture ships together, work together, staff on at school. So he's a he's a, a brother that I esteem highly, and um, of course give him credit for the school being a success that it is. On on the other the other fellow, his name is Femi Olabonjo. Um, he uh, he is a former student and left. When he graduated from our school, he went and got got a got a lot of training in computer and technology, and now he's our informational technologist on campus, and he teaches a computer class and so forth. I'll say more about that some other time, but this morning I have other things I need to say. Now, the last Sunday I was there was in a place called Kajula. Kajula is about seven eight miles, seven miles down past where our school is, in a village, and um, we've been trying, we tried three different times to get started there, but we were unable to do it. This time, two years ago, we bought some property and bought two plots. Now, usually they buy one because they have money for two, but we bought the plots, and uh, because I always feel like if you don't want to expand, you need more land, and the plots aren't very big. But anyway... This is a typical beginning of a congregation in a lot of African uh, countries. And, and, uh, and uh, somebody said, them. And anyway, uh, you build a little shelter, whatever poles you can get, usually to clear the land and use those poles to establish some kind of a shelter. So we have a small place there. Of course, there's nothing finished there, no floor or anything. And here's another shot at it. I'll go kind of quickly through here. But um, here are the children. They're, it's so unfortunate we don't have we don't have teachers enough to a new congregation they don't have experienced people and even interest wise and knowledge wise to take these children and put the written a place to do it but uh, there they are on the bench and for the time we're there this is a question and answer session um, it, 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 uh, uh, you have about a 35 40 minute uh, speaking lesson, and then you take questions and you give answers. However, there uh, I, I shortened the lesson because I knew there were a lot of questions, but the questions were so um, interesting and so many of them that they decided not to have a sermon, just continue the question and answer. So for that double time, uh, I, I, I did that. Um, Oh, I wanted to show you, well, let me go back up here. The uh, garment I'm wearing was given to me uh, just a couple of days before. Every year I get one or two new. I've got, I've got three sets over there I haven't worn yet. Uh, they give me so many. I don't like to wear them just one time and kind of get them messy and sweaty and then what I, I have to wash them or hang them up till next year. So I just don't even open some of them. Anyway, here's a photo. It's common every time I go. They want a congregation photo of, um, of a group out front. 
And you see that one white face back there? Uh, anyway, it's um, it's something like that 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 kind of thing is all over Nigeria. And I've been so many places. I go to different congregations every time I go. I've been to a lot of congregations, especially in Lagos. And they wanted a, a prayer for the children, and uh, so they gave me the I guess the smallest one there. <laughs> and uh, it is a. It's a privilege to hold those little small children, and they're so cute and precious. And of course, like any any baby, um, they're precious. You have you bring a child into the world. God gives him a spirit, and we have an obligation as parents to see that that little child gets to heaven. If you don't do that, what happens? Satan gets a hold of him. Mm-hmm. Folks, you just have got to do the right kind of a parenting job. You only have one shot at it. They're not with you very long. And they're gone. And the world gets a hold of them. If they're not really strong, they'll be torn to bits. Folks, don't ever neglect doing what you can for the children. I think that's the baby on this corner down here. Um, another picture outside. We had four motorcycles and two cars. <laughs> one family of five came on one motorcycle. And they don't mind bunching up. <laughs> and that's not uncommon. It's really not uncommon. The whole family, if it's not too big, can do that. Well. I want to um, I want to move now. That just gives you a picture of how congregations begin. Someday there'll be a building there. But I want to move into something else. Not the Bible this time, but something else that's pretty important. I have here a little copy of the Constitution. It has the amendments. And Amendment 1 says... Congress shall make no laws respecting the establishment or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or bridging the freedom of speech or of press or the right of people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. Now that is a um, pretty clear language, isn't it? It's not hard to understand. But we have really smart lawyers in Washington that can't understand that. You know, but I think most of us can get our hands around that, can understand it. They, just, just that phrase, Congress shall make no laws. About what? About the prohibiting or establishing of religion. Now, they're, they're doing that now. They're forcing Christians to make decisions. You're going to follow God, you're going to follow what's politically correct. Yeah, so we have this problem that Christians are facing with now. Maybe today you aren't faced with a personal response to that, but some are. You've heard of the photographers and the bakeries, and now this uh, county clerk in Kentucky have to make some decisions. And they made the decision on the side of God. What's happened? A photographer and a bakery put out of business because they're sued because of a conflict of interest. Because our country now, our free country, is taking that freedom and it's becoming less and less free all the time. So what we're looking at now is not just language, but people complain about the language of the Bible sometimes. But now let's look at some Bible language. Very simple, isn't it? Can you understand that? Do what? Yes. Repent. Huh? Anything else? Be yeah. baptized. Do two things. And if you're a responsible person, you have your own soul salvation heart, you'll do 
you'll repent and be baptized. Not hard to understand. We have religious, spiritual scholars who can't understand that. Like the Constitution, these high-powered lawyers, they can't understand it. That language is too simple. They're going to write it in such a way that it's going to create problems for the rest of the country. So, brethren, we can go to Africa. We can go anywhere else. And we can find people who can't understand clear and simple language. Maybe that's why. Maybe the less educated, the less economically uh, economically uh, people will find a way to heaven and some of the richer people won't. Now, we have a scripture. Do two people walk together unless they agreed to do so? Different translation say that a little differently, but you agree to walk together. You go together. You may ride in the car together. You may do things together. Walking means living. Not just walking. Not just trekking down the road. But walking. Doing things together. Husband and wife agree to walk together. So, they must find someone they agree. You don't marry somebody that's different. Not walking hand in hand with you. Young people, remember that. Young people, don't forget that. You've got to find someone who walk hand in hand with you, not just for today and tomorrow, but through life. And if we're not agreeing all the time and we're already hooked together, there we have to find ways in which we can walk together. Let me give an example. Uh, one of our friends in Benville gave us this story, talking with her. They had a family funeral. And two family members were brothers living in Iowa. And the family was in Benville, and so they drove down together. But these two brothers couldn't get along. <laughs> Can two drive together if they don't agree? Well, they got down here all right, but all during the funeral time, the people, family was together. They argued and fussed and fought and made life miserable for the people who came and not to hear them fuss, but to mourn the loss of their loved one. Now that's the other side of the coin, but they weren't finished. On the way back to Iowa, the argument continued. I don't know who's right or wrong. It doesn't matter, but they couldn't get along. Finally, they stopped the car. One got out, and the other went on. Can two walk together except they be agreed? We have a lot of families that are torn apart. Can't get along. So, while we're here, we want to make life happy for other people, not miserable. Then there's another verse. This one in Proverbs 27:17. As iron sharpens iron, you can read that. So one man sharpens another. Let's talk about that just a little bit. Now you know that a butcher has his uh, sharpener and he's got his knife and he's constantly keeping that knife sharp. If he's going to do a good job and he's going to cut the meat like he wants to cut it, he's got to have a sharp knife. We read in Hebrews 4 that the Word of God is like a sharp sword, a double-edged sword you can cut both ways with it. And so the Word of God then, as these two people are walking together in the car, the walk means going together. If you're together in the car, if you're married or whatever the case might be, if you're going to work together on the job of some other place, you must be able to work together. And if you can do that, let your differences sharpen the other person a little bit, and both of you can can grow and learn and be a better person. That's one reason why an assembly is important. If you miss the assembly, you miss being sharpened a little bit. If you're here, we can sharpen each other's character, 
thinking, knowledge, wisdom, whatever the case might be. We can encourage one another. So walking together is encouraging the other. Walking together is not my being right and therefore dumping my brother off and get home in some other way. That's not walking together. I'm not helping him any if I'm thinking only of me. But whenever I think of him, now, how can I encourage my brother? How can I sharpen his character, his belief, his understanding, uh, whatever the case might be? How can I help him? That's the real question. Not can I be right. How can I argue my right point? The point is, I want to sharpen him. I want him to be better. You know, and if he has that about me, then both of us are sharpened. It's iron sharpens iron. One character sharpens another character. One wisdom another, and so forth. So all of these things, you see. So one person has written, "Iron delighteth iron," <laughs> and you can understand that when you understand what it's like. So this iron and sharpen this iron over here and so forth, and we do that. So we brighten a countenance. Now, what is the word countenance? Somebody tell me what a countenance. What do you think when you think of countenance? Huh? Come on. Anybody? Huh? Face, looks. face, okay. You think of the face. What? Frown? What? You think of the face being brightened? You think of the face, shining face or something that might record it, something like that? So the face, yeah, the countenance. You, you, we, we become light on our feet. <laughs> we feel good. And our face shines. We're happy. We're jovial. Now, if we can help each other be in our countenance, then that's, be, uh, that's, that's good. So friends brighten the countenance of his friend or an acquaintance. So we brighten the face. We lift the load. We, we help each other. We're not trying to prove ourselves right. We don't have to do that. Let's encourage the other person. His friend's face shows the wisdom of his friend. Yeah. So we help each other. We show the wisdom of each other. So we converse in order. In order to build up the other person. We sharpen their personality. We sharpen whatever. We build up the other person so that we are not hurting, doing damage. We're building up the other person. So when we walk with God, His wisdom shines forth in us. Now, James said, you know what James said, huh? If any of you lacks wisdom, if you lack wisdom, you walk with your friend, that helps if your friend is interested in you. You could read the Bible. He should ask God, do you pray? You give God who gives generously. So while you're walking with God, to all without finding God it will be given, He'll give you this wisdom generously. Generously. So when you're walking with somebody else and you've been in God's Word, you've been walking with God, you can help build Him up and He with you. You see how Christian, walking with Christians, build each other up. You help one another. And so as we were, I'll read in our, read in our daily devotional where they use these verses we can ask, we did one and did the other one. It dawned on me, well these two really go together. Ah. Don't pound the pulpit. Ah. <laughs> Something had to wake him up, huh? Well, do you remember the point I was making? These two scriptures go together. Uh huh. When you walk together, you build each other up. You're talking about things, and you encourage the other person. That's the iron sharp. See, these two verses really are saying much the same thing, aren't they? And, and they say much the same thing when you read from James. Well, James says if you lack wisdom, you can, ask, you can ask your brother. That's okay. But the real answer is when you 
go to God. So once it's contemplated, think about it. Consider if you were trekking, walking with Christ. Think about that. Come think about yourself. If you're kind of walking hand in hand with Christ, boy, He would be building you up. <coughs> he would be telling you to repent and be baptized. He would tell you to be kind to one another, to encourage one another, do not lie to one another. He'd be telling you to believe with all your heart, soul, and mind. He, you, you would, you would, you wouldn't. Your feet would never touch the ground. You'd be so light. He would help you so much. Now just stop and think. You can and should be walking with God every day, and you can. So, can you or would you agree that you could brighten your countenance? So if you feel down, do something that lifts you up. Call up a brother or a sister somebody. Read the Bible. Pray. These are these songs are like a sermon within themselves. So good. The words are so good. And your face can shine again, even in a dark room. The Word of God, there's no substitute. Now I conclude this lesson this morning. And I hope it's been helpful to you. These two verses again. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? As iron sharpens iron, no man, no one man sharpens, so one man sharpens another. Now Cecil was in a game park. Cecil was in a partially protected spot um, in his environment. But he left that protection. You understand what I'm saying? When we're in the protective cover of Christ, living according to His Word, then we are protected and He'll care for us. But when we leave that protection, we're out in the world and we're following our nose that smells the scent of meat, then we lose that protection and the wolves are out there. So whether it's our Constitution or whether it's our Bible, we have Scriptures that help us. And I hope that these Scriptures this morning are helpful to you. As iron sharpens iron, let your brother and sister help you. Do we walk together? Let's walk together with people that can help us. And if we walk together with people that can't help us, maybe we can help them. But we help each other. So brothers and sisters, walk with the Lord. Stay in the protected area. Do what the Lord asks you to do. It's that simple. Repent, give up time.